question one. The accurate scale drawing shows a field. Okay. So this is a field. Um, the real length is 67.5 meters. Find an estimate for the real perimeter of the field. Um, so we're going to have to estimate what this length is. We already know that this one's going to be the same as the one below it. So if we add those two together, eight plus five, fifteen, yeah, 135.0. So that's already the top and the bottom. We just need to add these two now. Uh, I'm probably going to assume it seems about like half the length of this. This sort of looks you can see that yeah, looks sort of similar. So if it's half the length, I'm going to um, assume that it is 30. This is an estimate you can sort of guess. Um, 34.25. I think that's half. Well, it will do basically. Um, if, you, if you double that, just to get both sides, you get 60... 8.5 and then you just add that on to to 135.0 sorry that's going to make it a bit complicated 135.0 and that should give us uh, an estimate of the real perimeter of the field so 5 and then 5 plus 8 13 and that's 10 and that's 2 there you go 203.5 meters um okay so you can see this one definitely doesn't match these ones are too big and you're left with e because that's the closest to this number and remember it's, an, it's always an estimate so you just pick the one that's closest to the number don't do that in other maths questions only in, in questions that are estimates so the accurate scale drawing shows a garage and a house Garage has a real height of 2.4 meters. Find an estimate for the real height of the in centimeters of the house. Okay, um, so and just let's just stack stack the garages on top of each other. So it's like this long. It's probably one more. Uh, one more. And I'd put one more in there as well. There you go. It's probably about four garages on top of each other. That'll make the actual house height. You want to add in the, the roof as well. So it'll just be 2.4 times 4 because it's four lots of this. Uh, so that gives you 16. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, plus the 1 is 9. 9.6 and um, that's 9.6 meters and obviously when you convert that you get 960 centimeters again it's an estimate so just pick the one that's closest to it and we get D so now let's move on to the next question work out 50% of 1200 grams just half it, 50% is always half, so it's going to be 600 grams, and that's E. You can use this graph to change between inches and centimeters. Change three inches to centimeters, so I'm using a graph. You can see inches are down here, centimeters are here. What you have to do is find where three inches is, so it's right here, and then just follow the line up and see where it's going to push you out to. So if we come out here, give me a straight line, no. Um, we get, I think that's, so this is two, four, six, so around here is going to be seven, that's probably like 7.5 centimeters basically. And there you go, closest one to it. I think, because Bix is the graph and like we're sort of guessing in this area, 
That's why it's 7.6 makes the most sense. And using the above graph, change 50 centimeters to inches. Um, okay, 50 isn't on here. So what we can do is we can find 10, which is 28. So if we follow this up, 10 is 28. So 10 inches, 10 inches. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around. We have to find centimeters. Okay, let's use 10. Let's use 20. Nah, I need to use something that's easy. What could we use? A number that goes into 50, basically. One is too difficult to find is there. Uh, I am just going to use 20. Um, so 20 centimeters is equal to 8 inches. That means, obviously, if you double 20, that also means 40 centimeters is going to be equal to 16 inches. So 20 centimeters is equal to 8. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then from there, we can also find 10 centimeters is going to be equal to four inches um so basically you're just i mean half of this is 10 centimeters so half of this is also going to be four inches that's what you're doing there and i mean if you've got 10 centimeters is four inches then 50 centimeters is going to be equal to because from 10 to 50 you're doing times five you're going to times this by five as well and you get 20 inches and that should be an answer um I think we're going to have to go with the closest one. Yeah, I see it. I was going to go with B, but um, you can see 19.7 is much closer to 20 inches, so I'd go with E. And, yeah, I mean, the reason it's not is probably because, again, like, there's some margin of error on a graph, but E definitely makes the most sense. Um, question 6. One sec. Question 4 was C. Question 6. A model plane has a, has a length of 20 centimeters. The scale of the model is 1 to 380. Okay. Work out the real work out the length of the real plane. Give your answer in meters. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have to convert something here. But let's figure out the length of the real plane in centimeters first. So the model plane is 20 centimeters. And we don't know what the actual length is. But what it's telling us is that how much bigger the, the, the real plane is compared to the model plane is 1 to 380. So it's the same thing that we were doing up here. Basically, you're doing times 380. 1 times 380 gets to there. So you're going to times this by 380 as well. Obviously, you're going to have to work that out. Sixteen. And then you get three zero. Three times two is six. Zero zero six. Seven. There you go. So it's 7,600 centimeters, and then you just have to convert that to meters. Um, whenever you're converting centimeters to meters, it's just go back two places. So 76 meters. Decimal place goes back to two places. Question seven. A map has a scale of one to 75,000. Distance between two points on a map is 12 centimeters. Okay, so this length is 12 centimeters. And again, we know that it's 1 to 75,000. So this is times 75,000. To, to find the real, th real length, we're going to have to times this by 75,000. And same thing, where you have to do the multiplication. I'm going to use a calculator because you should know how to do long multiplication 900,000 there you go centimeters and then you have to convert that to kilometers so to convert that to meters um, obviously just remove the last two zeros now that's 9,000 meters and then you convert that to kilometers 
So we'll move the last three zeros. Nine kilometers. Question eight, 800 meters, two kilometers. Um, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So if 800, which is less than a thousand, is obviously going to be 0 0.8 k kilometers. Bosh. And I mean, an easier way to do it is just divide by a thousand every time you're converting that way. 75 to centimeters. So that's just divided by 10. So it's going to be 7.5. Let me, let me put these in. Question 7 was C. Question 8 was E. D. All right. Question 10. David is paid 34,000 per year. He is going to get a 3% increase in the amount of money he is paid. Okay, so percentage, um, 3%. It's an odd number to try and find. Um, I'd probably find 1% first and then just times that by 3. So we know to find 10%, all you have to do is remove 1, 0. To f or basically, to make it simpler, to find 10%, you just divide by 10. So that, that's basically 3,400. To find 1%, you divide by 100. So 340 pounds is 1%. And then if you times that by 3 to get 3%, you're going to just have to times this by 3 as well. And from that you get, um, I think it's 900 plus 120, which is 1,020 pounds is three percent so that's the amount that's the increase he's getting look at how much money david will be paid per year after the increase so it'll be 1,020 extra on top of 3,400 so that's going to be um sorry 34,000 so that's going to be 35,020 there you go see Question 11, Zoe wants to buy 6 tins of beans for the cheapest possible price. Shop A and Shop B both have a special offer. What is the cheapest price Zoe can pay for 6 tins of beans? Okay, let's just figure out what 6 tins costs on both of these. So, buy 2 get 1 free, but 65p each. So... To get three, you have to buy two, which is 65 plus 65. And obviously, if they get another three, that'll be six. So all they have to do is buy five tins to get six of them. So that's going to be the final price for that. And 5% of the normal price, 5% off the normal price of 48p each. So this is just going to be 48 times six. And you take 5% off of it. So let's calculate both of these. This is going to be 20. 24 plus 2 is 26. So that's 260p. Which is £2.60. So that's one of the options. I have to figure out if this one's cheaper. So 48 times 6. And we have to take 5% off of that. We get 288 and we have to take 5% off of that so 10% is 28.8 and that means 5% is going to be 14.4. And then you take that away. So it's going to give you two seven eight two seven four two seven three point six. I 
I think that's supposed to round up to 274p, which is £2.74, so that's D. Question 12. Abby buys a sofa for £540. Pay the deposit of 15% and rest of the money in monthly payments of £17. How many monthly payments? Okay, so 15%, that means... I think it's probably better to find out how much is left to pay over instead of calculating 15%. So, 5. She's going to have to pay 85% of that after she's paid the deposit. So, 85% of 540 we want to calculate. That'll be twenty seven Let me walk through it a bit more. Um fifty four is fifty four is ten percent. So if we times that by eight point five, we'll get to eighty five percent. If we times this by eight point five also get to 85% so we have to sort we have to figure that out times 8.5 just do the multiplication 20 so that times 5 is 25 plus 2 27 and 8 times 4 Two, oops. Eight times five, forty, and forty-three. Zero, nine, five, four. Dot there. So that's four hundred and fifty-nine pounds that is left for him to pay in monthly instalments of what was it? Seventeen pounds. So he's paying seventy pounds a month, and there's this much to pay. So if we divide it, that'll that'll give us how many we've got left, basically. Or you can count up from like seventeen until you get to four five nine to figure out how many is left. Um. So seventeen times seventeen goes into forty five. Thirty-four. So two, four, five, nine, thirty-four. Seventeen times two is thirty-four, and the leftover you get here is eleven. And then you bring down nine. And 17 goes into 119. Um, seven times. So 119. And there you go. So it will be 27 installments that he has to pay in. Um, because 27 times 17 is equal to whatever that number was. I think it was £459. Cool. Question 13 now. Amelia and Sophie did a test. The total score for the test was 75 marks. Amelia got 56% out of the 75 marks. Who got the highest mark, basically? So 56%. Um, find 50% first, which is 32.5. Which um, probably didn't get half a mark. 6% will be... It'll be one percent times by six, basically. So it'll be zero point seven five times six. So let's calculate that. Zero point seven five 
30. 3 times 6 times 7 is 6 times 7 is 42. Oh, but plus the 3, so it'll be 5. There you go. 6 times 0, 0, and then you add the 4. So it'll be 4.50 is 6%, and then we just add that to this. Which gives you 33, 37 marks is what Amelia got, and the other person got more than that. So, Sophie B. I think last two questions. So, Donald buys a pack of nine chocolate bars. The pack consists of two pound fifty. The pack costs two pound fifty. Sells them for 45p each. You have to figure out the profit now. Okay, so. We have to figure out. Let's let's just do how much he, how much he makes. So, he it sells it for 0 0.45 pounds. 45p. And sells all, all nine of them. So that gives you. Nine times four is thirty-six plus four is forty, and that's four. So he makes four pounds, and the profit he makes because he spent two pound fifty on it. Um, he only actually made fifty. One pound fifty back. Because if he if he buys it for two pound fifty and sells it for four pounds, the difference is one pound fifty. So that's how much he actually made. And now we have to figure out the percentage profit. So the percentage it's just that over the original. The original price was two pound fifty. So now if we just calculate that. 1.50 over 2.50 we can make the fractions bigger so it's easier so if we times them both by 2 be 3 over 5 and then we just have to convert that to a decimal or a percentage so I'm going to convert it to a decimal first um, You make it a hundred. Oh, and you can just convert it to a to a fraction over a hundred as well. So if you times this by twenty times a three by twenty as well, you get sixty over a hundred, which is sixty percent. But that doesn't seem to be one of the answers. So let me just check. I did. I did something wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, okay. I made a mistake when calculating how much he made. He, ma he actually made £4.05. So we have to find the difference again, which was 55p. Yeah, it was £1.55 that he made then instead of, instead of that. So £1.55. And I have to redo this section. So... What can we make? We can make this. We can still make this into a bigger number. Mm, I think if we times it by, f uh, what can we times it by? I'm just going to times it by 100, so it'll be 155 over 250. And then we can do that over a, uh, make it into 1000. So if you times it by 4, yeah, 155 times 4, 620 over 1000. 
and then you can cancel these out and you get 62 over 100 which is you know how to convert that to a percentage of 62 percent and you're left with d so i mean even if i would got that bit wrong i probably would have gone with d because it was the closest to 60 percent and you would have saved a bit of time there but okay question 15 last one computers sold 19.3 million find the percentage decrease we have to do the difference so it's 1.1 million less over the original which is 19.3 million and then we can make that bigger so it's going to be 11 over 193 and then let's try and divide that as quickly as possible so it's going to be 0 point something add a 1 it's not enough add another 0 and then how many times does 193 go into that um, 193 times 6 is too big uh, so it's going to be 193 times 5. Okay, so 965. Put that underneath. 65. And then you minus it. 965. Yeah, nine six five. Okay, uh, that gives you five thirty five. So thirty five left over. Sorry, that's going to be five up here. And you put a zero there. How many times does one nine three go into that now? Oh, only once. Oh, I got it wrong. It's one, uh, one, three, five. Hey, uh, uh, how many times is one nine three going to one three five? Um, well, we already know that this is six is one one five eight, and seven is going to be too big, so we put six here. One one five eight. That gives you a leftover from that. One three five zero minus one one five eight. 192, which we have to go with that again. And now all we need to do is figure out um, this is 0 .00, 0 0.056. That means it's going to be 5.6 something percent, right? Because this is how you look at it. So it could still be 5.7 or 5.6, depending on if this is a 5 and we have to round up or if we have to round down. So we just have to figure out, actually we already know we're going to have to round up because 1920 is going to be bigger than 5, right? Because 5 is only 965. So I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say is this place value here, the one that you, when you complete this, it's going to be bigger than 5, meaning we're going to have to round up, meaning we're going to have to be 5.7%. So yeah, that will be all of the maths done. Um, and I might do a video for the other sections later.